and it thinks about John. John. Yes. 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 Uh, Vice Chairman Perrin could not be with us this evening. Um, he apologizes, but he had some business that, it, that he had to attend to this evening. Um, if we could all please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Superintendent, do we, we have delegates? Well, as it is this evening, I know we do, but that's anyway. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we do. Tonight, we have, if I may invite up to the table with the podium, we have two high school students, Carly O'Keefe and Lucy Floyd, who represent the National Honor Society and they have a fundraiser fundraising request. Thank you. So I'll turn it over to Carly and Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so our first fundraiser that we um, were interested in doing this year is a brick engraving fundraiser. And it's, um, we're, we talked to those, like the construction committee, and um, they're willing to donate 30 bricks from the high school to us so we could engrave the bricks or um, put plaques on them. And we're going to um, build like a wall or some kind of um, like structure inside the new high school, the middle school, in the courtyard. And um, it would just be more of like, um, I don't know, it would just be like a, something like a t keepsake that we could have. And um, we could bring it to the new school as well. Yeah, we're going to ask businesses or families if they would want to like sponsor the bricks and they would pay to have their own brick and then they would get a plaque or get it engraved whatever they would want. So say like they had a kid going to the school or a business wanted to advertise, they could do that through the bricks. Yes. <laughs> then our next one was sort of similar. We are going to plant trees around the town um, and get plaques made up and then the same thing, businesses or families could sponsor a tree. And I spoke with the owner of Pemberton Farms, and I think it was in Somerville, and he said that they always donate things to school. So he said he would check his inventory, and he's almost positive that he can donate trees to us. So it would give us a big profit. And um, the money that we raise, we have a $20 fee when you enter National Honor Society that you have to pay. So we'd want to reduce the fee, because a lot of students like, complain about having to pay. And um, the other 50% would either go to the Access College Foundation, which was set up to prepare children to go to college who don't get enough guidance when going from their families or their schools, or we would um, donate to the Central Institute for the Deaf, which is um, allows <coughs> deaf children to get a good education, and we would vote on it which um, foundation to donate to within the National Honor Society when the school year came. Um, the next one, it's not as much as a fundraiser, but just a new idea. We wanted to add a book club um, to the just like curriculum, so that for clubs. And uh, we have a teacher, Miss Ruck, who is willing to be the advisor for us. So, yeah, that'd be a good club. Yeah, a lot of students say how they want to read outside of the curriculum and be able to like pick books that they want to read rather than the ones that are assigned to them. So I think that'd be a good opportunity. Yeah, next, the next idea is also not so much as a fundraiser, but of um, a campaign. We wanted to start a Winter High School bottle project where we would do a campaign where to limit plastic water bottle usage and like therefore plastic waste. Yeah, um, I know we're getting water bottle fountains that are specifically built to refill water bottles at our school next year. So we can use that as a, something to kind of promote our campaign. And then to fundraise, you have a few ideas. The first thing would be a used book sale. We think we would hold somewhere in French Square um, on September 13th from 9 to 1, if that works. And basically, people could donate books that they already had, and then we could sell them for a lower price. And then um, this obviously wouldn't make a lot of money, but people can bring in recyclables and we can bring them and cash them in for money and this wouldn't be as much to 
get profit, but more to raise awareness at how many things could actually be recycled. Yeah, it could also, um, we could go, we're thinking of going to businesses, local businesses, and getting their recyclables, and um, also, in the meantime, asking them for a possible donation, and we could get a picture of them and put them in the lobby, and um, it would kind of like unite the community over the, the cause, more so than like just the high school. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, yes, um, this is for NHS? Yeah. Yes. Now, would this be open, I'm thinking about the book club, to other students? Yeah. I definitely. mean, you're like you have freshmen who, or, or sophomores who can't really join NHS yet, right? You have to be a right. junior yeah. in, this, in this district. And um, so it would be open to other students? Yeah, National Honor Society would just set it up and then it would be open to the whole school. It's more of just another club we're looking at okay. that's open to everyone. Um, but it has to be in the lobby, it's going to display the book of the month. They're going to get a Twitter account instead of talking about it on Twitter. So it's more of a, just a, a whole school activity, but because they're a national honor, they're kind of overseeing it. Yep. Yeah. No, it's exactly. awesome. Yeah. So, Floyd, you mentioned something earlier about they have to pay a fee for. Oh, for because, National Honor Society. Because I thought National Honor Society they're inducted in, so they don't. They're not. It's not part of the activity fee because it's one of those where you have to be invited to be in. Yeah. So what is the twenty dollar fee then that's on there? Um, so when you're asked to join, obviously you can decline or accept, but most people accept. And then there's a twenty dollar fee, and that's used. I think it's mainly for the ceremony to buy. Is that the for the national yeah. ceremony? For the for the association the induction itself, ceremony. The induction. Yeah. So we would just want to reduce that. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have flyers if you want some for the water bottle. <laughs> and we have um, papers as well. Yeah, we just typed up. Okay. Class of 2015. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what we sent to me. Yeah, we also had another in there, right? Well, we didn't. I we didn't don't have, have their packet that they I brought have, up. I have this one, the class of 2015. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I had that one for the packet. I didn't have this material. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. we can't go on to the um, When is the first event? What's the day of the first event that you wish to do? Because we just got this information, or actually we don't have it yet at all, but you're just giving it to us now, um, we're not able to vote on your requests tonight. Um, we, we simply haven't seen it. Um, we'd be happy to take it up at our next meeting. I just don't want you to fall behind in what you're doing. Um, because we aren't able to vote on it tonight. Yeah, um, as soon as I can I'll take a look at it if I have any questions about how it might be presented the next time. And I'll get in touch with you from this Bell. Okay. 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 And, and I think like the book club can go ahead. I mean, some things you don't need right. a vote for. Right. So. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to take a moment uh, this past week uh, we had a very unfortunate uh, occurrence that happened in the town of Winthrop where Miss Sabrina 
Fudo uh, passed away. Uh, Sabrina was a charming young 11-year-old who went to the Arthur T. Cummings, went to Winthrop Public Schools all her life. Um, and one of the things that was so passionately spoken about Sabrina is how much give she would give to everybody and her friends. If she was your friend, she was a true friend. Um, I can tell you from the bottom of my heart that I was truly heartbroken by the news of the passing of Sabrina. I know that this community was, was uh, taken aback and devastated by the news, but I was also very proud of this community over the last uh, few days rallying together in honor of Sabrina and her family. Um, we're going to miss Sabrina, but her name and her face is going to live on forever for us. Um, and I pledge to her as I pledge to her classmates and to all of her friends and to her brother's friends that we are going to do everything we can to support them. And we are just so saddened by it all, but we know that she's in a better place. And as Father Burke said so eloquently, you know, we're, we're working for each other now uh, because she has uh, gone somewhere special and we want to make sure that uh, the community comes together as they did. And any support that our students need, uh, please come to the coming school at any time. Uh, Mr. Herity has that set up for anybody. And uh, we want to give, on behalf of Winthrop Public Schools, our deepest, deepest sympathies to the family. If we could all rise for, for just a moment, please. A moment for Sabrina. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mrs. Sharkey. Um, I just want to also say that both of the families, of course, are Winthrop families, but also they were our Winthrop school family. Marcella was a school nurse um, who was the grandmother, and uh, Joanne Bigley was also our, one of our ESPs for the longest time. And um, both Jackie and Michael um, were all students in our school system. You know, they started kindergarten and left in you know the 12th grade. And so we just want to say to the Fudo and the Bigley family how much we love them and how much we care for them. And, um, and that we'll always remember them. But I also wanted maybe the superintendent that we also lost another school community person. Yes. Um, um, this was, it's been a difficult week for winter. As everybody knows, the Arthur T. Cummings School is named after Archie uh, T. Cummings. And uh, unfortunately, this past week, his wife, Barbara, passed away. Um, and we are sorry for the loss of Barbara. Um, you know, she has a great family in the community. It's always been all about education. And uh, we also give our deepest sympathies to the Cummings family and know that we're there for any support that they need. Mm -hmm. Just so that Barbara and Arky were just recently married for 59 years. Wow. And God gave them to each other. And for that, there is a blessing. So. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. Uh, is there any public comment at this time? Thank you. Next is the minutes from both July 21 and July 28. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. To motion by Town Council President Gill. Second. Second by Mr. Holden. Is there any questions or discussions on either of those sets of minutes? We'll vote now. All in favor of uh, passing those minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Sir, do you wish to speak on that? None. Um, next are subcommittee reports. Um, we have a, um, a budget subcommittee. Mrs. Sharkey. No, I have this. I have the superintendent evaluation. Okay. I, I don't have the budget. We didn't have a budget one. No. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, this is the superintendent's evaluation subcommittee meeting. Um, it took place on um, July 28th. 
um, at 11 o'clock in the superintendent's office. In attendance was John Macero, superintendent of schools, David Osborne, a private citizen, Don Sullivan as a private citizen. School committee members were Gary Scomero, William Holden, and myself. Uh, the agenda surrounded the discussion of replacing the present superintendent's evaluation with the DESE's evaluation of the superintendent. As a little bit of a reminder, um, a few school committee meetings ago, um, we approved the opening of the um, superintendent's co contract solely for the purpose of changing his evaluation. Um, there was, during the meeting beforehand, we had meeting with uh, council on um, all of the um, things that we would need to know and understand. So the superintendent made agreement and we agreed that we would open it for that sole purpose. Um, some members of the school committee had um, previously questioned and why we had the, this on the agenda. Parts of the DESC superintendent's evaluation to be too excessive. In particular, the superintendent being required to visit every classroom in the system. Um, and this may have been an error on my part, is that um, I think that I inadvertently incorporated um, a piece of the principal's evaluation tool into the superintendents. I don't think people expected the superintendent to visit every single classroom. He'll try, but I don't think he'll be required to go into every single classroom. If I may, I found out where that was. Where was it? It was on my goals. Oh, okay. I listed it as one of my goals. <laughs> right. I was looking through there. So. Okay, thank <laughs> you. I, because I have to honestly say when we were having this uh, subcommittee meeting, I could not find it in the about in the superintendent's evaluation. So, but I did find it, it a piece of that in the principal. So I said, I must have done that too. For, for all, I do apologize. So, anyway, um, after much discussion, there was a vote to replace the superintendent's present evaluation with the DESE's evaluation of superintendents, and it was approved by three to zero. So. Um, Mr. Chairman, do we need to have a vote of the whole school committee on that? Yes, we do. So I'll make a motion. We don't need a motion. Okay. When it comes out of the out uh, of subcommittee, sub okay. Very good. positive vote, okay. then we just go directly to a vote here. Okay. No motion or second needed. Okay. Um, do you want me to repeat? If you would yes. tell us what we're voting on. All right. We're voting to replace the superintendent's present evaluation with the DESC's evaluation mm -hmm. of superintendents. So are, there, are there any questions on what we're doing, what it means? Okay, we shall. We're going to take a vote. A yes vote will be to approve the removal of the old and the insertion of the new evaluation into the superintendent's contract. Or permission to negotiate that. I'm sorry. We're asking for permission to negotiate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank right. you, Mr. Sharpie. There was also discussion on when the super, superintendent's evaluation would be scheduled. A vote was taken to schedule his mid-year evaluation to encompass July to December and his end-of-cycle summative evaluation report to encompass January to June. So again, there was a vote taken, three to zero. Um, again, um, Mr. Chairman, I will read the vote, what the vote uh, entails, um, to schedule the superintendent's mid-year evaluation to encompass July to December and his end of cycle summative evaluation report to encompass January to June. So. Follow the academic year. Yes. Thank you. Are there any questions on this? If not, we will vote for permission to negotiate this. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, it's unanimous. Um, just one final thing. Um, additional suggestions, a uh, discussion occurred regarding the superintendent in submitting his goals and objectives for the school year 14-15. He will provide these in September. John's SMART goals will align themselves to the DESC's evaluation goals. 
finally there was discussion on the school committee formulating their goals for the Winthrop school system and having a day to present to present them and that's it okay thank you thank you Mrs. Sharp. are there any other subcommittees thank you superintendent's report thank you mr. chairman <coughs> so we lie away with two weeks away as we rest up for what normally we look forward to a new school year as it begins and this year we've had a little few little things that have changed in our system as you all are aware we are uh, working on opening three schools as opposed to four uh, two weeks from tomorrow as I say the countdown is T minus 14 um, I will open by I'm going to combine if I may mr. chairman the superintendent's report with the transition because a lot of it has to do with transition um, of what we are doing as well as if I may also add Mr. Chairman if I can even go right into personnel because there's a lot of stuff that I need to cover and I want to make sure that I just if I can go on those roles and please you know interrupt as we go through it but those all tie in together so let me begin by stating that uh, it is my goal and intention we will be ready for September 2nd I know that people are coming in and out of the buildings as you see right now the buildings are especially at the uh, high school we have constant uh, today we must have had at least eight trucks in there where things are moving and lots of stuff is happening um, and those things are happening and we feel confident that we are going to be in a good space and ready to roll uh, we've made some great headway in some areas and in some areas we're still doing um, some of the, the projects that need to be completed um, I will say that the custodial staff has worked extremely hard at the, all levels. I don't want to just say, I mean, I've been at the high school a lot to go through it. And I have set a date of August 29th to have the majority of this stuff complete because that's going to be a date where we invite parents of high school students and high school students to come in. We're going to have two open houses, one at 12 to 1 and one at six to seven uh, obviously if you can't make those times um, you know touch base with us we do uh, we're trying I know that some people have come in as we look at things and we're still in the process of painting and, and moving and getting the building up we have recently had the gym floor has been is pretty much completed with the exception of having the uh, plates down for the um, volleyball uh, the uh, there's been major uh, work that's been renovated in all of those areas and um, we feel good we're doing complete paint jobs of the whole school we're trying to give it its whole look uh, downstairs in the calf we have we have built two rooms that kind of blended right in with with the area um, over so there are still though we are still working right now on soundproofing the middle classrooms at the high at, at the high school <clears throat> that was on the project there are still items that we will complete as we move along and we may even start the school year on some of those items but I want to express again as I stated at many of the graduations last year I need you to have patience as we move through this um, I will tell you I you know there are moments even I um, sit there and get a little overwhelmed by it all because we've got so many things happening at all the time frames but I feel confident and good with the amount of commitment and work that is happening there. And um, I've, I've been meeting with Rich Safuni on a daily basis, uh, who is our facilities manager, who feels very confident that things are moving and we're moving those in the right direction. The, we did this past week <coughs> receive some information regarding the um, middle when it was the middle school we had had it tested back in June and I can tell you back in the June period of having the school tested it wasn't the issue wasn't so much on because the heating system wasn't on whether or not you know the the um, air quality was fine and all that the ma majority of all of those rooms the air quality was fine there wasn't an issue with that however the issue was that at that time some of those items that had been recommended had still not been completed the other issue which is a major issue that we can deal with right off the bat and miss Bellistock and I have spoken about it 
is the culture of the building. A lot of what we have in the culture of the building is we tend to, you know, teachers tend to want to bring a lot of stuff in to teach, and they have a lot of things in there. But what happens is they cover radiators. They cover things that can't be covered. And it's our, it's important that we are on top of that constantly because we can, we can prevent those. And so one of the things that we are doing now is working with Ms. Bellastock is that A, we're making sure that all our faculty when they come back are aware that they cannot put anything on that as we've tried to do in the past. However, we're going to be posting that in the rooms and we're going to make our custodians, our principals, very responsible to make sure that our staff is being responsible in those particular areas. Um, we, this past, this week, we've had, we are having all the filters changed in all of those radiators. Uh, I mean, the univents, all of those filters have been changed. One of the things we did do is we brought in an outside cleaning company to do the gymnasium area. And I can tell you that they cleaned all of those vents areas. And I don't know the last time that those vent areas were clean. Um, you know, and I've been here, I'm going on to my fourth year, and I will say that in some areas I feel very disappointed that some of those things were not done in a timely manner, but I can tell you right now they will continue to be done in a timely manner because we've got it all set and set to schedules. Um, we have looked at all of the things that were on those lists, and we have made sure, we've worked with Al Legee, who's the building, the inspector of, um, uh, what is it now? It's the commissioner. commissioner of the inspectional services who did a walkthrough last week of the building with Rich Safuni, who gave me a report that you have here at the desk here tonight um, and told me that he felt that we had gone so far from the June. He was very pleased with the amount of work, the amount of how clean the building is, and the amount of um, direction that the building has been taken on with all of the codes that we've been able to bring it up to with the safety codes, the fire codes, and all of that. And that's what you've been seeing this week uh, currently is that they're in there right now doing all of the upgrading on the Wi-Fi, the upgrading of the fire safety codes, the upgrading of um, the, the vents, the filters, all of those areas, even to the point where we are taking out two of those. There's two bushes that tend to be right up against the building. Those are being removed because we don't need to have those up because that's another area that can cause, um, if they're by the vent, that it can be pulled in. And so those are being removed. I spoke with Steve Calla today on that. Um, so that, that's an area that we have been focused on. Uh, we were focused on it before. I will say that I was happy that I received the report now because it's, it's something that's telling me, are we completed with these projects? Are we not completed with these projects? I mean, I have to look at it for the positive on it. We have them coming back. They will be coming back in probably the first week of November because that's gonna be the heating season. And once we get the heating season on, we wanna make sure that that's all set. Today, they were working again that we do have hot water. You know, we got the boilers all up and running. We have a new boiler coming in. That's going out for bid, so we're gonna have two brand new boilers in there. Um, I just left the boys. They were out for football, but they'll be very happy to know that their showers are ready now on that side. They got all of those up. So, I mean, we've, we have, we've given the building, I feel, a good solid facelift. We have to remember there's a reason why we supported a brand new middle high school that's coming in because we had two buildings that were old and that needed replacing. But we have the, we turned the middle school into a high school. I'm looking forward to when the kids come into the school because that's when it becomes the high school. The kids will turn that building into their building and make it what it is and what it should be. Um, any questions on this part? Yeah. Um, I had a chance to go through the building the other day, just quickly, the high school. And I might, it's a little concerned with yep. the ventilation. Right. And I know everything's being worked on. Um, those two new rooms um, that had the existing old vents um, in the cafeteria. Now, I don't know if they were intake, output vents, but there was only one, so it only serves one purpose. But I mean, I know what it's like to sit in a classroom, doors closed, and no ventilation. And it's a 
struggle to, yeah, to stay awake and right. to learn. And that's my biggest concern. And since we're putting another 350 bodies into that building. Right. And I just saw this report. It's, I saw right, this it's, report. About, it's about 250. You're absolutely correct on that. And that's why we're working on it. Ms. Bellastock has been working with Mr. Sifuni. Now, Mr. Legee did not see any issue with that, those two rooms, but I will double check with him again on that. Yeah, I mean, because the plan was always to open windows, but the windows right. are 12 Well, feet but you have, that's why you have those poles that well, can open this, it. This. But we want to make sure that the vents are set and what we need to have done is done. I mean, that's, the other part is, is that what, what bothered me on the thing is that when they have the buttons off, well, why, why, why is the unit vents off? You know, why are those turned off? You know, who turned them off? You know, and then, then you become with the investigation of, well, why is it being turned off and who turned it off? And so the culture has to change in the sense that they can't be turned off. They're doing their job. You have to let it, let it do its job. You can't put stuff on there. The, the chalkboards have to be cleaned on a daily basis. Um, then that's the responsibility of our custodians on that component. But I, I'm very confident with the crew that's up there right now that they will do their job that they've done because we walked out of the high school, the old high school this year, and I felt that people felt it was very clean, and you know they had done a good job. This crew that had come in, and I want to continue with that, um, but we will certainly look into that. I guess, and I will say I've been on <laughs> talking to John back and forth on emails. Um, I've been in the building twice um, in the last two weeks. Um, what I saw two weeks ago, what the custodians have done up to that point has been phenomenal. For them to be able to turn that building around, get it clean the way it is, is really, a, was a monumental job. But, I'm always a but, I still have concerns. Um, I went in there on, um, I think it was Wednesday, this past Wednesday, and I have to say, again, what's being done is great. I have some concerns, and I know that I've talked to John about the building being completed on time. And when I'm saying that, I know that there's little spots that we have to take time to do. Um, I guess for a matter uh, of discussion, is there a time, Mr. Superintendent, that we would say we need professional, more professional people beyond the, our custodial staff to get the building up. And I guess I'm not just talking about um, structurally. I think Bill has talked about the air quality, which is so important. But I'm also looking at our students coming in. They, um, it's quite an adjustment for our students to go from what was a high school back into a junior high or middle school environment. Um, as far as making it look as sophisticated as we can possibly make it so when they walk in there, they're going to feel good that they're not just walking back into the middle school, but they're walking in a quasi high school. It'll never be that high school, but if we can make it as good as we can, and I guess that's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the completion of the cleaning, you know, and when I'm saying that, I know what the custodians have done, but there's still uh, something that a professional person might go in and see that we don't see. I know from my, what I have saw, it's just the things of the doorways, the doors, the railings, all of those things still need to be completed. So I guess, and in addition to the painting and the cleaning. So I guess I'm asking, will there be a Waterloo date, say Friday or Monday? I was gonna tell you, we've hit it because we've, we've hired people to come in. We have painters that are in there on a daily okay. basis that are in there painting as well as our custodians. Okay. The custodial staff did such a great job they that they did. cleaned those rooms up by the end of July, the high school component portion of the floors mm -hmm. and that stuff area was clean, and then they were able to move out to the other mm -hmm. areas. The problem with some of the other areas is that they've got work being done in exactly. those particular areas. So one of the things that I've, you, what happens when you start painting an area is that you want to, you see the other spots that aren't painted, so you want to get all of those uh, components painted. 
So over the weekend, I spoke with Mr. Uh, first of all, after our email last mm -hmm. week, um, we had done quite a bit of work with the lobby. The mm -hmm. lobby has been painted over. Um, we are working on the library starting tomorrow. They have... Um, the library is done. The library is done. Okay, so the library was done today. So is that's the good. library painted? Yes. It, it wasn't at 11.30 this morning. It's done, it's done now. Yeah, my custodian stayed till five o'clock today, so it's pretty done. Thank you. So, and and I and I totally understand and respect all of those uh, things on that, but my time limit, my my deadline is September second, and so I'm working towards that goal of getting the stuff done. We have we have tons of professionals that are in there right okay. now working with plumbing, um, electrical work. Uh, Univent work. I mean, all of those things that we have to have them in yeah. there anyway doing. And then our goal is to get them. We want them done by the end of this week so that we can then, you know, finalize whatever else that we need to have happen. Okay. So. Um, I know I've been a pain. In no, 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 no. In no. the butt, and I don't mind saying that, but I just want to make sure that it's to the best of our ability. Right. Can, 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 and again, I, I, I want to preface this by saying this is not um, against the custodial staff or any. I know I saw, I've spoken to them. I know what they've right. done. But there's only a certain amount that our staff can get done in that time frame. And that's what I'm speaking about is additional. But so First of all, I just want you to know that I don't, if I'm supposed to take it as criticism, I don't, okay? okay? Um, because I take it as good constructive <coughs> criticism. We, we, we're trying to do something here that not every community has to do, worry about or do at times. But, and I, and I think for the most part that we're 75% we're mm -hmm. there, and I think we're gonna get there. Uh, we're going to get there. Okay. It's a matter of, are we gonna be there by September 2nd or by September 8th, okay. but we're going to get there. The thing is, is that my, when I look at where we're at and what we're doing, I'm trying to also make sure that the, the building is ready and that we're also getting ready for school, mm -hmm. you know, because we've got to make sure that our teachers are able to come in and do the work that they need to do and get all of those things organized. So I understand it's not going to be the Winthrop High School that folks are used to. But I feel very strong that our kids will make this their school and will make it their environment as they go through that, as well as our staff. I think a lot of people still believe that they're going back to their eighth, you know, mm -hmm. sixth, seventh, and eighth grade teachers or that, is, that space that they're in, and they're not. They're going back to a space that mm -hmm. is their space and it's, it's different. But Please, I you know I, I want people to keep pushing. And I will keep banging. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Okay. Okay. Can I I'm just um, We had public comment okay. at the beginning. We'll have it at the end. Is your do you have a question or a comment? Uh, comment. Or a question about, this about this issue. Please go ahead. One of the um, things I'm concerned about is that when the school was breaking down last year, yeah. you know, at the end of the year, you, you definitely lost teaching time because they were trying to pack up the school. It's the end of the year, it's hard to keep the students focused anyway. My concern is that we're going to start the year off like this again if the teachers normally don't come in the day before the right. students. That's not much time for them to unpack and get themselves situated before the students come in and be ready to teach. Now, I feel we're going to lose time again with our students because it's all going to be about unpacking. Where am I going to put stuff? I don't have as much room. I can't put it. I'm not saying we should have there's just getting situated themselves and with all the work that needs to take place structurally and physically it's uh, I'm concerned that when we start school we're not starting teaching we're, we're going to be settling out where everything goes in the classroom and, you know again the students are going to start off in that a very slow manner and you know it ended I don't want to say negatively last year they're all done, but you know, the high school can come up down, and now they're not too pumped up for this. It'll be fine. It's building, you know, they'll make a But that concerns me. The teachers won't have enough time to set up their classroom to start teaching. 
of wasting and I'm not I don't and I don't and I don't that, but set up of their classrooms I mean our goal there. is on that the Tuesday what we've done with professional development this year and it's it's ironic this year that I don't have the Tuesday Wednesday Thursday whereas I've had it in the past when we started the school on the Friday but this year we felt it was you know there was so much going on we, we changed the schedule we went back to opening on Wednesday but what we've done this year is that there's the school building on the, the Tuesday, the day before school, is school building related. It's not town-wide professional development. It's school building related. Principals know that their task is to make sure that those principal, the teachers have enough time to get the things done that they need to get done in their class, as well as also go over the new procedures of the building, because we felt that that was important. We then, if you'll notice on the schedule, we do have a professional development day the following Tuesday because it's election day and they needed this building and so that's where we created it. Whereas that time is when we would then do the majority of professional development that's town wide. Because what we've used to done, what we've done in the past is we've done the professional development those first two days and then that last day we've given it to the teachers. Now, we do have teachers that come in all the time. Our requirement is not to have, you know, the teachers are required to be there on the, the day before, but we do have multiple teachers that come into their classrooms to set up in any given year. Um, that's a habit of teachers. They want to do that. They want to be ready. We expect that they're going to, once they have students in their class, that they're to teach, not to sit there and set up. That is our, you know, we expect that that's going to happen. Um, and I know that Ms. Bellastock expects that to happen. And so I would, all their materials will be put into their classroom before they get All their stuff is in their classrooms. Yeah, okay. We've given all the, all of their stuff is in their classrooms now. So we when we when when they packed everything up and and you know according to when they packed up at the end of the year, they were they were packing up during the half days at the end during the afternoon and the half days. Um, they were packing up when they had those Thursday mornings. We had let them do that. We tried to not pull away from anything with uh, students well, on I'm that. So I just, but I mean, but I'm not going to say that that didn't happen right. because those things happen. What they did. It's right. Just part of but what we, happens when you have to make right. these kind of adjustments. But, but it's the same in all of our buildings because we've got sixth and seventh grade over here that's moved into a yeah. new environment, and we have third grade no, that's moved building. over here. Yeah. So. So our goal is to make sure that they're ready to roll on that second, on the third. Okay. Just going back to you a little bit. Um, I do hear your concerns, because that does happen. I mean, you know, like you said, the end of the school year happened, we were trying to wrap up and ship out, and now we've shipped out, but now we've got to settle everything. I can only tell you, as a former teacher in the system, as Mr. Macero spoke, which I'm sure you've been in the buildings and have seen it, there are so many teachers that are ready on that first day. They've got their lesson plans out. They've got, you know, everything that's needed for them to get started immediately. Will there be glitches, which you said already? Of course there's going to be some glitches. But I think that we can say, and whether we look at it as a positive or a negative, we are going to have a lot of new teachers this year. And if there isn't anything that a new teacher wants to do, it's get into that classroom and make it shine and make it look like them. I've always thought of my classroom as not a space, but as a tool, a teaching tool. Everything in that classroom was to help the kids to learn. And, and then we also have our experienced teachers who know right off the bat the first lesson and the first homework assignment. So I do have a lot of faith, even though I don't know the new teachers, but I have so much faith in our teachers that are already experienced. Um, are they maybe not, might not know where every little single item is, but I know for that first two to four weeks, they'll know where everything is. And then they'll have to, you know, be doing I'm that. I'm glad to hear everything that we did Yeah. Of my and I think you would be, going on, you know, we'll if you had a chance, quick. if you had a chance to go in the building, you no, would, okay, you can see that the classrooms are ready. I'm not saying that things don't need more uh, <laughs> spiffing. Uh, but the but, 29th, if you get a chance, yeah. it would be great. I'll, I'll write some Bellastock. I'm 
is there a date the teachers can go in now? I know. They already have been. As of August 11th, we let them come in. So they can't come in. So now. we've been having okay. them in now all, all week long, the last week and a half. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're trying to find missing book cases and, and, and things like that. But the uh, boxes have to be unpacked and the crates going back that by Friday of that week. So a lot of them want to get everything out of the boxes. We had Pirates and Rex kids this summer working with us, which was invaluable. And they unpacked our book rooms in the library, a lot of areas that were common areas so that teachers didn't have to worry about getting books into the book room. They could just focus on their own classroom. So. No, there was talk that you know teachers weren't going to be allowed into the building until the Tuesday before. Oh, good to know. I sent an right. email to them a few weeks yeah. ago. They were happy because I didn't want them in while we were back to the floors and everything else. But they've been, they've been coming in, so it's, it's been great. And they're, they're excited. The new teachers are excited about some of classrooms. So I imagine the teachers are just, um, you know, they're, they're taking on the, the challenge. And they're, they're smiling, which is always good so far. Mr. Sarah, are you going to talk about walkthroughs for the school committee later? Or? Yes, well, I had in the email that I had sent out last week, I had, I had suggested a walkthrough date, a couple of days. We could do the 28th or the 29th. Um, and I guess I would, you know, I, I know that some folks are on vacation that week, mm -hmm. but we can. I can certainly send that back out again. I'd like to do it on the times that isn't the other walkthrough, you know, when people can come through. And so the I, I have no problem, you know, I'm here, so the, sorry. Just before um, we move on to the next subject, I just heard you loud and clear about the, the in the past, the filters haven't been changed. Right. And, um, just moving forward in, in all the current schools, um, just want to be clear, whose responsibility is it to make sure that, you know, whether it's six months or annually or whenever, that things like filters and really essential to the air quality and other um, it's the senior custodian's responsibility to make sure that those things are all on a time timely fashion that are done and are checked and are make, made sure now we have a facilities director as well who's also making sure that those things are taken care of we have con we have service agreements with companies so some you might see AC you, um, the HVAC company the cooling company that's there that's what they were there today doing those filters. We we have them with other uh, companies. Last year at the Fort Banks, we spent a lot on making sure that those areas were uh, up to date, filtered, and all of those um, structures. So that's why we pay for those service agreements to bring those in. But the ultimate responsibility lies with the senior custodian because they're supposed to have everything on a timely fashion. And then, of course, with the within the building principal. Just want to. Um reassure us sitting here and everyone who's watching and it's going to be in the school next year that whatever has happened in the past is we're, we're moving on and we are going to do things on schedule people will be held accountable and supervision so forth that when things are supposed to get done they get done I think the community is very concerned that you know we don't have another school that's gonna be let go Right. So, just want to voice and I that. Totally, I totally understand that and totally respect uh, and, and accept all responsibility on that to make sure that that will not happen. If I just refer to uh, Richard Foody's report, item 25 kind of goes with what Don said. Um, we talk about things will get done and done. Um, 25 says um, ensure regular air testing. Why can't we have monthly or quarterly or can we put a definitive date we can have our own people and doing it too we can get those to and do so it. I mean yep. we're gonna be in there for at least two years right. and I'd like to see item 25 clarified along okay. like what Don said instead of we're gonna do it in a regular date I'd like to that's days, and, days, and just so that you're monthly. aware that the item 25 is referring in this one to carbon monoxide which right. is a different thing on that that we will test that all the time because that has to do with the rink and all of the, the thing, but you're also wanting to make sure that that carbon dioxide testing that we continue to do, so that we can uh, make sure that that's yeah, if that's it's going to go into the facility logbook, right? Um, and since you bring that up, are there um, devices being put in to monitor, like a smoke detector in the building yes. for carbon monoxide throughout the building? Not well, just there's a there is a whole uh, the, the 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 chief has put in a whole fire safety and the building codes to put in to detect all of these various things. So um, to go into detail of what is what on those areas, I couldn't tell you okay. at this moment, but what I can tell you is I know that he was very cognizant of making sure that we have all of those types of uh, areas in there. Okay. 
and on the walkthrough, if I may, last thing, if um, what do you say? when we do it, well, for now, for this, if we could arrange, if our Al Lee Al Lee and Richard Fui could join us on the walkthrough, sure. so if we have questions, you don't have to get back to us. Got it. Um, if they can be there, we they can just answer our questions. Okay, so I just need to finalize with you folks what works best for all of you. Mm -hmm. um, on that day, whether it's the Wednesday or, or the Tuesday. Perhaps when this meeting is over, we can, we talk, can about talk about that later. Okay, okay. great. All right. All right, thank you. Um, if I may, so, which brings me to personnel, because I know that there are um, some concerns, legitimate concerns. You know, we've had some uh, movements in a lot of our buildings, not just. Uh, one particular school or the high school we've had some changeovers this year and um, as I've stated in the past <clears throat> at past committee meetings some of those changeovers have come because of moves there's no question about it that you know proximity to where locations that they are some are because some folks have decided to go into a different community because they're going to get more money and then others you know and then there's the combination of they don't want to deal with the transition and they've gone somewhere else or, or that's the way it is. But I can't, you know, I, I can, I can, we've had our human resource person is, is trying to dissect what those particular issues are uh, when she talks to folks who have left. But what our job is, is to make sure that we're recruiting the best candidates for the best positions. And so far, I will say that the people that I've been bringing in that have been brought to me by the principals who are bringing these are not just people that are just walking into a classroom for the first time. These are folks that we have recruited and plucked away from other communities as well that are four, five, six, some folks eight years, 10 years teaching experience, a lot of experience that is coming on board with us. Um, so. Uh, for example, today we just brought in a new math teacher, William Barrett, who is coming in from uh, Connecticut, who is a person who's been writing all the Common Core curriculum for them and down in that area, but he's being relocated because his fiance is working up here, and so we're taking full advantage of that. Um, We've um, just going down through the new hires. Uh, Diane Abbott has now been put into accounts payable. She's replacing Diane Montgomery. Uh, we have Jamie Bingham, who's going to be an ESP at the Arthur T. Cummings. Emily Chandler is a new chemistry science teacher at Winthrop High School, who has four years experience at the high school level, as well as two years experience at the college level. And so we feel that that's a very good um, find on that one. Sarah Donovan, grade four teacher. Suzanne Dunn, grade seven, another teacher that we plucked this one from Maine, who's being relocated coming down into this area. Whitney Asenta, who's an ESP at the William P. Gorman. Uh, Marta Gentile is the new secretary at Winthrop High School. Stephanie Hayes will be an ESP at Winthrop High School. Michelle Holmes will be an ESP at the William Gorman Fort Banks. Don Hurley, ESP at William uh, Gorman Fort Banks. Nicole Cady is our new eighth grade English ELA teacher. What we did is we moved Dan Toulouse from the eighth grade uh, ELA teacher to the lead high school teacher who will be teaching part of the AP program and he has moved up to the high school level. We felt that he had a lot of experience. He was very enthusiastic to come up to that level. Um, a lot of students who've had Mr. Toulouse in the eighth grade absolutely love Mr. Toulouse and we're very happy that he's going to be up into that area and I thought that that was a good um, uh, move by Ms. Bellastock. Uh, and so Nicole will be replacing um, the uh, Mr. Toulouse there. James Lundy, who's a doctorate, he's going to be teaching ELA up at Winthrop High School. Caitlin Madden is our new speech and language teacher at the William P. Gorman School. Margaret Neptune is a new eighth grade math teacher that's coming to us with, uh, I believe it was three years experience in her math. Um, we have Deanna Poulos, who's special education teacher for Winthrop High School. And Michael Proctor, who, who is coming on to our school uh, from one of the private schools that deals primarily with um, therapeutic behavior. We were very pleased to be able to bring him in to run our therapeutic uh, behavior uh, class. 
Uh, those are currently the new hires, and I'm sorry, Kristen Burke. Don't want to miss anybody. Oh, Kristen Burke. Yes, grade five teacher who is coming over to the coming school. Currently, we are still <clears throat> um, working on various positions because we did have in recent uh, Ms. Costas from the eighth grade uh, so, um, social studies is moved on to teach in Wilmington. Um, Mr. Rowley is going to be taking over the eighth grade uh, history, but also the Mr. Rowley is going to be taking over the Washington DC trip because he's gone on that trip for three years. He knows the trip well on it, and so he is going to be uh, moving on to that. Uh, Kate Kelly, who was one of our, uh, she the Span Spanish. Kate? Spanish, Spanish, right. Kate is moving into a different uh, district. Um, and so we are currently the Spanish position we are still uh, working on. Uh, Keelan Welch, who was at the high school, I mean, was at the middle Next school as the librarian. We, she was originally moving over to the William P. Gorman as the librarian in that area, has decided to work closer to home over in Marblehead, and she's going to be over there. Um, but we, Miss, knowing Miss Pearson, Miss Pearson has gone in a whole different direction on that position and is already uh, ready to hire where she's going with more of a common core reading academia, academia on that. Elizabeth Wiseman, who is a speech teacher, uh, is going to a community down the South Shore. We have Lauren Joan Nocton, who was a um, lunch aide, who is going to be, um, she's leaving because she's moving to Middleton. Uh, uh, Cara Brown, who was a high school math teacher, did move over to, um, I believe she's up into Hamilton Wenham. And Mr. Bell, who I believe I may have stated at the last meeting, uh, Mr. Bell's wife has moved to um, Central Massachusetts, and Mr. Bell is now going to be going out living out in that area. Um, a lot of those areas. And then at grade one, Susie D. Gregorio does have her letter of resignation in here. Susie is now going to be an administrator over in Melrose. Uh, and we wish those folks um, the best. Um, today, I did hear that, um, I don't have his letter here, but you may have seen a posting that had come out as of five o'clock. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, had informed the students at the end of the year that his wife was, he was the high school, middle school drama teacher. He had informed the students that his wife and him were moving to Florida and that he was 95% sure that he was not going to be returning. Uh, but today was the day that he finally um, gave us notice that he was not going to be returning because apparently uh, he and his wife have um, obtained positions down in Florida. So we will be posting for um, the middle school in this case, the drama for four, five, six, and seven, and then the drama for the five, uh, six through eight. Um, the positions that we have posted, we've posted all, we've posted mentoring positions so that we can make sure we have some mentors already, but we, wanna, we wanted to offer other teachers an opportunity. Uh, the academic support specialist is what Mrs. Bellistock has turned that position that Ms. Welch was going to go into over, and she feels that that's going to be a good role of that specialist. Um, we've posted all lead teachers in all the buildings, the high school, middle school, and the um, Cummings. I mean, the high school, I'm going to call the Cummings the middle school for the most part now when I say it, but the high school, the Cummings, and the William P. Gorman. Class advisors, we've posted for a junior class. We needed one class advisor to um, two freshman class advisors and two eighth grade class advisors. Uh, we had the uh, position of two special education teachers and we had the grade seven math. Now some of these positions have been filled because we haven't been here in a month. So we try to catch up with on these things and that's why those um, stuff has been posted. Um, and then we did have a retirement. I'd like to take a moment to read that letter. Dear Mr. Macero, 25 years ago, I began working as a special needs um, ESP for the Winter Public Schools. At that time, I had two children, one in kindergarten and one at the Dalrymple. The hours were perfect, and I was fulfilling my dream of working with young children in a school atmosphere. I worked in the Dalrymple School, Willis School, the Gorman Fort Banks, and the A.T. Cummings School. 25 years later, I'm watching a new middle school, high school being built. I graduated Winthrop High School, as did my two children, and am proud of the education we got in the Winthrop Public Schools. 
I am honored that my daughter teaches in the Gorman School. Over the years, I have seen so many changes in how children are educated. I met wonderful administrators and worked with some of the finest teachers. I worked with many special needs children and saw so many remarkable achievements with them. I will miss these children the most. It is a difficult decision, but at this time I have decided to retire. I know that I will be spending much of my time now with my grandchildren, who have been an absolute joy to my husband and me. Also, I am requesting to buy back my sick time. Thank you for your time, Mr. Michelle, and a special thank you to the staff of the coming school who have been like family to me. Sincerely, Carol Ann Grant. I can just say something. Please. I've known Carol Ann forever and a day. And what, what, besides her being a phenomenal aide, what many people didn't know is that uh, Carol Ann was also a teacher. She had her teaching certification. But for her, it was easy for her to be with her children and then be with her grandchildren as an educational support person. So she gave us the best of world. She was excellent, excellent, excellent with the children. She cared for them and she loved them. And I just wanted to um, just tell, Carol, have the best of worlds now. Be with your grandbabies and have a wonderful time with them. And thank you for being with us. John, may I just say a couple of things about some of the people that you've already mentioned? Sure, Maybe I, that'd know. Be all right, Mr. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to do that. I'll do it. Just okay, go ahead. Go ahead. all right. I just wanted to mention some of these, some of the teachers that have left, I do not know, but I do know a large percentage. And I'm looking at Susie DiGregorio, and Susie, I, I babysat for Susie. Susie was in my son's graduating class, and um, I love her, and um, that's a great loss. But uh, Susie gave good reason. She wants for her career goals to do more, and it's not here yet for her in Winthrop. Lauren Bell, phenomenal English teacher. Keelan Welch, I saw her as a first-year teacher, and she has grown to be such a wonderful, wonderful libra librarian specialist, and the kids all love her. Um, Kate Kelly, I don't know Kate, but I only know that she was, I believe, the sophomore advisor, a freshman advisor, and I know the kids will miss her. And Christina um, Costas, um, I've known Christina now for about five years, and she has more energy than God, I believe, or almost as much as God and she does everything with the kids. She gives herself 100%. And also to Mr. Ferguson and to all the other people that he didn't mention, but I just want to say thank you for all you did for our children, and we will miss you. And if there's ever any positions open, we welcome you back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. I'd just like to um, thank Ms. Quinn on behalf of Winter Public Schools for her I'm years sorry. of service. Um, 25 years is a remarkable, you know, to do that. That's two, year, two complete run-throughs of grades, you know, from kindergarten up through uh, 12th grade. And um, I got to know Carol a lot over the past mm -hmm. three years, and um, I really uh, respect the job that she did, uh, and I'm really thankful, and I want to just tell her that she will be missed. As, you know, as I, you know, Miss, this is, Sharky mentioned the folks that are leaving, and I mentioned at the last meeting here, I don't like to see anybody leave. I like to feel like we build a system that's going to continue on. And the people have their own personal reasons and what they do. But the folks that are leaving, I want to thank them for their work that they've done for Winthrop. Um, I got to know some of them more uh, because I've dealt with some of them on, a, on different types of bases, such as the Washington, D.C. trip and various things like that. And, um, but, you know, our crosses may path, our, our, our paths may cross, as they say again. And, uh, we're here. Yes, I can wait to vote oh, with the show pending here. I, I just want to say everyone wants to take credit for knowing uh, Ms. Quinn the longest. Um, I will tell you that I graduated from Winthrop High School with Ms. Quinn, so I'm afraid I'm going to trump you yeah. all. Well, I'm going to trump you because I was your parents' paper boy when she was born. <laughs> <laughs> So there, thank you. Thank you. That one. Thank you. <laughs> uh, she was a wonderful woman then. She's a wonderful. 482 woman now. Winthrop Street, first floor. If you need the details. How many windows did you break? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> um, I'd make a motion that we um, buy back Miss Quinn's sick time as she has requested. Second. Second by um, Mr. Gill. Any questions or comments on this? 
I take a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions are unanimous. Um, if I may take out of order, we have a retirement citation, a resolution to Ms. Quinn, and I would like to uh, make a motion that we approve um, this citation for her upon her retirement. Um, is there a second? For the second. Mr. Um, Gill makes a second. Um, I thank you very much for that. And um, I don't know if I missed anything. Vote. We'll just, we need to vote. Thank you. We need to vote on the citation. We'll vote on the, that's what we're voting on. We're voting on the citation, approval of the citation. Any questions or comments on the citation? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions at unanimous. Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, two questions on personnel. <coughs> yep. um, maybe I missed it. The world language Latin teacher, I hear we have one. Yes. I didn't hear it. Her name is Alba. Sorry. I, 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 I had mentioned her at the last one. Alba Guzman. And she taught with she taught with Miss Bellastock over at. Uh, Will she be teaching another language? She's going to be teaching uh, Latin and Spanish. Okay, awesome. Um, but she's very passionate about Latin, and I'm so very happy she wanted to come work with me. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as the former middle school principal, what role will she be serving? So right now she's serving in the role of um, she's working with us on curriculum uh, based stuff that we need to get in with the Department of Ed. Um, She's putting all our DDMs together. She's also working on the pro pay for us with the school building project. And she's going to serve where I need her um, as needed with administrative duties. And it's just funny you mentioned um, the ESD stuff. In the next two years, do we have any type of audits coming up that we might want to postpone? Well, I don't know if we're, we, we can try. We can certainly try to postpone it, but usually when they tell us, you've been selected. Well, actually, if we're proactive now and saying, right. you know, Right. Know they know we, scheduled. We, we have been in with, we've been working with Department of Ed right now because of the reconfigurations of our schools and what we're trying to do because they have to reconfigure it for accountability. And so those things are, so they know what we're, we're dealing with. And there we are, what was the big one? The, the real big one that was. Coordinated so program review? Yeah. The one that you know, high school teachers had to come in, be interviewed. Oh no, that's the accreditation. Right. We don't have that for another right. We're, we're seven years away from that. Okay, that's we're, we're yeah, good on that. that I'm looking we had at. that our first, my first year. Okay, we so. walked into that. Right. Right. right, or we may be six years, but we'll have the biggest issue on that was mm -hmm. the building mm -hmm. itself. Right, right. and okay. so okay. that's that's a good thing. Okay. Right. Take me down and take a look at that building now, if they'd like. <laughs> um, Not if much you there? Yeah. No, no. I did have one um, maternity leave, so that's in there as well. Thank you. Any questions for the superintendent at this time? I did go by the former high school on Main Street this morning. And not counting all of the windows that have been removed and insides that have been moved out, the structure itself appears to be about halfway down. Um, the back is down through the courtyard. Um, the front of the building, the front door was still there this morning. I don't know it's still there this afternoon. But the sign, the save sign, is gone. They took that down. Five yes, the, the seal has Which been tells taken me down. that the seal has been taken down, which means that building is gone. Um, they're ripping the rebar out of the concrete. Every time I go by, they're ripping rebar out of the concrete. Um, the crusher was going at full speed this morning. Um, and not as loud as I thought it would be, um, creating fill that doesn't have to be trucked away and preventing up and allowing us not to bring fill in to build the ground up, which we are doing. Um, so it, it's moving along. Some people are sad to see it go. A lot of work has gone into this. I'm kind of happy to see it go so we can get the new building going. The next item is the warrant. We have a warrant SVW15-2 in the amount of $327,193.47. Motion. Motion by Town Council President Gill to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Mrs. Sharkey. Any questions on the warrant, please? Now we shall take a vote. All in favor of approving this warrant, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions are unanimous. Next is the payroll warrant. In 
and that is dated okay. July 16th, 2014, and it is in the amount of $136,399.04. Motion. Motion by Mr. Sharkey to approve. Second. Payroll, second by Mr. Gill. Any questions on the payroll? Warrant will take the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm sorry, I'm, I said aye. I withdraw that. <laughs> I can't vote on the payroll warrant. Because um, my sister is an employee yeah. of the yeah. school department. Um, I'm going to do that again, and I'm going to try to watch what I say. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I abstain. That is approved. Next is the use of buildings and grounds. We have quite a few of those this evening. We have the request from the class of 2015 for a car wash on Saturday, August 30th. Winthrop Youth Football wishes to use the Miller Field, and there is a list in our packet of the dates that they wish to use that. The Gorman Fort Banks PTO is an ice cream social and a math night and a literacy night and they're requesting um, PTO meeting times. The Joni Star Dancers have two requests in. Um, the uh, Royal Soccer team has a request in for a Zumba fundraiser. The girls basketball wishes to do two car washes and uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives Robert DeLeo has also requested um, use of the Arthur T. Cummings cafeteria for his annual Women's Health Forum. Move that we approve all of them as a pack. Thank you. Thank you, President Gill. Mr. Gill has uh, made a motion to approve all at the same time. I'll second. Mrs. Sharkey seconds. Uh, Mr. Holden. Just one comment on it's not so much who's requesting it, it's the date, a spring date. Going that far out before the transition has begun. I'm just nervous that we commit, you know, a group. The auditorium? The yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine, but if that's, that's the only space we have. If right. you need free space, that's it, you know, and the gym. And I just want to be careful. We, we, we had the high school um, <coughs> drama already put in their dates that they needed. Uh, she gave those to Miss Haynes. And we connected with the middle school because we, we kind of penciled in the middle school dates according to what was happening in the Excuse past me. with the drama. So we believe that most of the auditorium stuff is completed for on the weekends by the la by the middle of August by the middle of May. And then when we have the events for school events, so for that week senior week, as you're correct, that Monday night there'll be nothing in there if we do the award ceremony that night. Like the you know that's the 31st, May 31st. So we should be okay on that because they're in there on Saturday and Sunday, and we're not usually in that on that time frame. I just be I'm mindful of no, space you're right. there. You're right. You know. Right, right. So we haven't. We there's nothing else. That's the only thing, and I was surprised to see it in this fast on it. But I'm sure they're thinking the same. Right, way. absolutely. And I don't blame them. That's what yeah. she said when she called and asked. Because usually she's the last week of June, but she moved it up this year because now you saw her block. Yeah. So. Okay. The Jody started the yeah, oh, yeah. It was just yeah. a date. Oh, one. It was a date. When yeah. the, it was the right. karate kite flying club. It was the date I was looking at. But the but the high school drama show was two weeks before it. They've already uh, three weeks before it. They've already set up when they're going to do their show, um, and then they've already set up their dates for December. So, as we've told them, we need to get, we want to make sure that everybody's all set on this. It's really important. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions about it? Uh, we have a motion and a second to consider them all at the same time, and so we'll vote on them all. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next is the um, rental fee policy. This is the second reading for the use of school facilities rental rates. We had um, the first reading a couple of meetings ago. If you would like, I'm happy to, to read through this. It should only take me half an hour. Or we could have a motion to waive the second reading. Motion to waive. 
Second. Mrs. Sharkey on the heart. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Sharkey. You're welcome. There's a motion to waive the second reading. And Don seconded. Oh, thank you, Ms. Sullivan. You're welcome. Ms. Sullivan seconds the motion to waive the second reading. We're going to vote on waiving the second reading. How about discussion? Oh, thank you. Is there discussion on no. waiving the second reading? But well, thank you for reminding me to ask, President Joe. Um, I can always count on you to put me in my place. Um, I was thinking of discussing it. Okay. <coughs> We're going to vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, we have waived the second reading. Um, we will now vote on approving the use of school facilities oh, rental rates, that which we just waived the second reading on. Is motion. there a motion? Motion. Motion by Town Council President Gill to approve. Is there a second? Second by Mrs. Sharkey. Any questions or discussions on this? We'll vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Haynes, for your work on that. Mandatory background check. I can report on that. We've set out uh, for our new staff. Uh, it's mandatory that they do the fingerprinting. Uh, we've, we've, in our new uh, staff letters that we've sent, they're the ones that we're required to by the time we open up the school year, that they all have to have their fingerprints done. And then we have gradual time to get the rest of the staff on board on that. There are five facilities that are out there. The staff can choose. They go there on their own time frame and they get their fingerprint done, they get a certificate, and they send that in to us, and then we know. If they've already done it, so in the case where we have two people that have come from out of district, you know, out of state, where they have done it, because Massachusetts was the 50th state to jump into this, um, then we will accept that. All right. And um, this was, at our July meeting, referred to the policy subcommittee right. Uh, to look at our policy on this now and right. to determine whether we need to update or not. Uh, yes, I know the discussion at the meeting about fees, who was going to pay it, who wasn't going to pay Right now, the fee is on the responsibility of the employee per employee. 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 Oh, employee. Thank you. I was joking, we would make the new employees employee. pay the fee, but our current employees. I don't, that, that would probably okay. be something that would have to be discussed. Right now, the new employees are paying. Right, okay. Well, that was a condition of employment. Right. So. Right. Okay. But yes, it's a condition by the state. Uh, the next item we have is a donation of the sign that stands in front of the Winthrop Playmakers on Herman Street, right next door to the um, coming school. Uh, you may know the building has been sold. There is a marquee of sorts out front and uh, the Winter Playmakers has offered to donate that sign to the Winthrop School Department. Um, they would pay for its removal, they would pay for its moving and being set up at, I guess at the place of our choice, but they've suggested the Memorial Auditorium on Pauline Street at the high school. had the opportunity to look at this sign, I don't, we drive by it a million times, um, and while I believe it is a very generous gesture on their part, um, if there is a motion made this evening, I intend to vote against it. Um, it's a very nice sign for the Winter Playmakers. I don't think it would fit nicely for our use. It is a one-sided sign. Um, and we know from experience that we really need a sign that is perpendicular to the street, not parallel to the street, so that people can see it as they go by and not have to stop and read it. Um, it is not a sign where you put letters up, it's a sign where you would, it's a cork board inside a glass case. Um, and you would put flyers up, so you wouldn't be able to read it as you drove by at any rate. And frankly, I have questions about the uh, posts that go into the ground. I inspected those today, and um, they are wooden. 
and they do go into a dirt ground. Um, I don't know how long the sign has been there, but it, to me, it does show signs um, of being in the ground for a long period of time. Um, it's certainly up to the committee what we do um, with it. Yes, Mr. Um, it's kind of nice we drive by the coming school and they have their marquee, but it's putting letters in, it's changing, and Fort Banks has the same, and the high school does not. So, I mean, I would leave it up to the principal and superintendent to make that decision. But it'd be nice to have a little connection to the community that if someone's walking by, maybe not driving by, they can look in and just see what's posted for upcoming events at the, uh, the auditorium. So, but that is a concern. When they say move it, are they gonna make it repairs, put new posts in, and refurbish it wherever any refurbishing needs to be made or is that's gonna be it's gonna be dropped off in pieces for us to Hon put together. Home sign was going to remove it and install it. Okay, so they were gonna remove it from there and they would install it. If we felt that there would be that we needed some repair that would probably be on our end to do that repair, which I have no problem taking a look at if that's what we wanted to do. Um, if I may I just what I would if we were to take if we were to use the marquee the marquee, we would have it not like the sign at the Cummings, where the sign is beautiful at the Cummings. The problem with the sign, though, is that you have to look this way if you drive by it, as opposed to making it more kitty corner, as they say. And that's, we would look at the marquee at the high school to do it. Um, you know, it's hard for me to not be a little, because I've been a member of the Playmakers for 23 years, and I have also have it's where I met my wife and it's where I met Winthrop, you know, so to me it's a very special place. And to see the building go, it's sad to see the building go, but that marquee is about 20 years old. It was placed in there a number of years ago. It actually was hooked up with electricity too, so that they could light it in there. Um, but it was really, their idea of it was they wanted to see it remain in the community, if it could, and, and promote the arts. Uh, and what's going on at the high school auditorium. And that was really their goal, to do it. If we were to take it, we would make sure that it was in a good location that could be very visible. But we wouldn't just promote what's in the auditorium. Obviously, we'd be able to promote the senior events, any fundraising events, things like that, that would be able to showcase. So. I believe it also says with the playmakers on the sign. Yeah, we would have to probably change that. So that's, that would be an expense. I, I guess I'm just saying um, it's a piece of Winthrop. The Winthrop Playhouse is Winthrop. I know it was a church beforehand, but for many years it's been our playhouse. Um, I don't know of too many communities small like Winthrop that have a playmakers and have a playhouse. And, you know, um, I, think it, I think it's worth the time that it may be to do some some repairs. Um, I know that Mr. Honan could really make it and put it back into some tip top shape. I, Richie Honan can do anything with Mr. wood. <laughs> Richie Honan's <laughs> retired. Yeah, but he's, we could still <laughs> take him to do that. Um, uh, his nephew uh, runs the company. Oh, is he? I yes. didn't know yeah. that. Yes, uh, Matthew. Matt. Matt's doing it, huh? Yes, Stevie's son. Okay. You learn everything at the school committee. Um, <laughs> Um, but I still support because I, I, well, I do know Matt from when he was a little guy. I don't know him recently, but I'm sure his uncle has given him many, many skills. But besides that, I know that they would do a good job. And I do support that we keep the sign. And um, it's something that we can make another decision on at another time. But. Um, I'm sorry, what do you mean make another decision on it? No, time? I'm just saying, say if something happened to the sign or it didn't hold up, that we would make an additional decision at another time. But right now, I don't want to see that go. That's that's my opinion. I don't want to see it go. I want I, I like the antiques. <laughs> so. Ms. Sullivan. Um, could I maybe make a motion to table this unless until we get more details about the cost that we could incur if we do take it on? Is there someone that can just give us more detailed plan or proposal for this rather than deciding here and now that it's should or shouldn't come? Certainly. And if we wish to have it refurbished, I think is the word that Mrs. Sharkey used, that is going to cost us money. Mm -hmm. The offer is to 
take it out of the ground and right. put it back in the ground. No, I understand. Well, I wonder, I mean, is, is that something that a, a, a cla an industrial arts classroom could take on as a project as well? Or if we still had industrial arts. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some, there's, is there a classroom project that, you know, maybe the drama club could, you know, I don't know. Just I'll second an idea. the motion to take. I'd like to see this move forward and just leave it up to the superintendent to work out the logistics. If he wants to put it in his front yard or the high school. <laughs> there's an ethics violation on that. Uh, but, you know, it is a piece of Winthrop. I'm sure they want to resolve these hurtful things that are happening to their playhouse and I'd like us to help them out. Um, but I would like to see it refurbished, not as is. Not the money now. Well, that's up to them. That'd be the condition. They have, okay. There's a, there's a motion on the floor right now, and it's been seconded, to postpone this uh, to a future date while we look into any costs that may be incurred. Uh, and and uh, by accepting this sign. So we'll take a vote on that motion, which is to postpone. Are there any questions or discussion on the motion to postpone? We'll take a vote. Ms. Ames, would you call the roll on this, please? Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Ms. Strachey? Yes. Mr. Gill? Yes. Mr. Holden? No. Mr. Spock? Yes. The motion passes to postpone. In our packet, we did have a letter of sorts from the class of 2015 regarding fundraisers. Um, but I don't believe we have a member of the class of 2015 oh, here. No, I'll represent them. Okay. Um, they've asked for permission to do several things. Oh, has already been approved. Yeah. Okay, yeah, some of these things. We've, we've taken care of. There is a request for a movie night. If they call it movie night on Miller. I'm assuming they're referring to Miller Field. Yes. Yes, um, they, they want to um, some sort of an all-night party type of event for the seniors. And they do it in the fall after I mean, for football games or sometimes in football season. And um, They don't have a particular date in mind, but they're looking to see if this event would be something that could possibly happen. Okay. Um, they're talking about you know, uh, police detail, breathalyzers, um, lots of sh parent chaperones, yeah. um, things like that. They kind of want to model it after the re Relay for Life overnight event that is very successful. So that's where they're going with this. For me, the concern is always safety. So. Yes. An overnight event is. Yes, Mr. Holt. And unlike the uh, Really for Life, there's no alcohol at Really for Life. Um, and there wouldn't I, be any alcohol at high school event either. Oh, then why would there be a breathalyzer? When you come in. When you come oh, in. when they come in. To make sure that they're sure. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. No, so that is much like any of, you know, the all that party and things, when the students come in, they breath lies, if they're not on the breath, they're not allowed in, so. Um. Okay. Mr. Superman. Uh, I would personally like to have some more information. I would like to see if we could at the next meeting, because it's not dedicated just for, like it has to be decided tonight. Right. My request would be, I would like to have the PTO First of all, be able to tell us that they're on board with this, number one, and how they would be on board with it, with the students, well, you know, and that representation. The interesting thing is I'm going to have like a, a, my PTC, right. and I'm meeting with them at 9, and then I'm meeting with the class of 2015 at 11. Okay. So I'm actually meeting with both those groups tomorrow. So this is kind of, this is kind of why I timed it this way. So I think they just wanted to get your feedback on, is this something that's possible, and then we would work with the, the you know, the uh, parent group and with the, um, the senior class to see if, uh, you know, the more details for the next meeting. Okay, so I'll let you guys ask questions. I'd like to have a public safety input in that too with the police. Right. And maybe some specifics instead of saying there'll be supervisors. Who? Right. Oh, absolutely. You know, like who? I mean, and, and yeah. 
Is this a? <laughs> is this volunteer? <laughs> Is this just a senior <laughs> event, or is this, who does this go towards? Is this high school students, or is it? I believe it's just seniors. We just want it as a senior yeah, event. Um, there's no motion, and um, I'm hoping that there won't be. Um, so it, it, the sense of the, the committee seems to be, we need more information. Absolutely. Thank you. But you guys will think about it if I go back to them and if they get more details. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We are an open-minded group. Uh, usually. <laughs> usually. <laughs> Some of it. Superintendent is laughing. I'll ask him about that later. Um, <laughs> speaking of overnight <laughs> issues, um, I'm sorry, you want to go on? They want to get a t-shirt uh, fundraiser as well to that. The t-shirts. Just a t-shirt. They want to sell t-shirts to make money. Probably oh, super famous. Super fans. What we're trying to do is we're trying to promote our athletics and we're trying to get kids to want students to show up at our sporting events. And, and part of this is to uh, make more awareness of, of, of the team's the school spirit for our for our athletics. We can also wear them to the drama programs as well. So, uh, so that's totally about athletics, but I think that was the intent of this is, is to um, to uh, increase school involvement at the athletic. Got it. I make a motion that we approve the T-shirt fundraiser proposal for the class of 2015. Second. Second by President Gill. Are there any questions or comments on that? Mrs. Sharkey, did you? No, okay. I'm sorry. We'll sh we shall take a vote. And I, will, uh, and I will be in favor of it and no will be against. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions, it's unanimous. So T-shirt fundraiser is approved. We'll have one. Thank you. Um, as I was going to say, um, regarding overnight issues, we still have the um, issue out there of um, Mr. McPhail's request to bring the cross-country teams on an overnight, and I have not had any further information about chaperones. Uh, I'm all planning on that, um, and part of the this committee's vo vote, the stipulation was that he would provide us with um, more information on chaperones. He has not done that to date. And so I would have to say that based on our vote, that request for a trip should not happen because we do not have the information that we, we requested. Uh, if we could let Mr. McPhail know that um, I would appreciate it. Thank you. I believe he had planned that for September. That's why I want to let, make sure that he knows. Yes, sir. And, and just so we're on the topic of fundraisers, if the superintendent can um, have a letter sent out to all staff saying fundraisers need to come before the school committee. You know, I don't want to drive through town on Saturday morning and see kids out doing things that, you know, that we wouldn't like them doing, canning in the street, you know, to big pet peeve of mine. But uh, I'd like to, New Year, let everybody know Fundraisers need to come through principals who attend the school committee. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Next is public comment. Again, public comment. <laughs> public <Question>. relations. <laughs> <laughs> Question, um, iPad initiative. I, um, so you just, I know a lot of kids are asking about the iPads. iPads are on their way. Um, we, we We've been working, Mr. Uh, Ruwako, I should have brought that up in this presentation, but Mr. Ruwako, myself, uh, Ms. Bellastock, have been working with Apple, um, and so right now we're working on the letter that will go out to, to uh, for parents, because what's going to happen is we're going to set up nights where parents come in and sign up with their son or daughter for the uh, release of the iPad. So our first initial thing is that we will uh, give out to staff, and then we will then give out to students. Because I remember sitting in that meeting with Apple, and it was a three or four week right. um, appointment of the iPads. I'm going to say. So we're, but what, we're, what are we going to do first? Go back to what Rogan said. School's going to start. We weren't doing textbooks because we we're using iPads, but if the kids are there, there's no textbooks, there's no iPads. How are we no, start the school? We're, we're, we're using textbooks, and we're going right into the, and we'll get into the iPads as we go through the process with it. We're not going to be able to just run into go right in on that from from textbook right to 
the iPad is the only textbook. So we, we have to do a gradual, as any school will tell you, they're doing the gradual uh, implementation of it. But that wasn't how it was presented to us. It was presented, since the lockers are smaller, you can't get a backpack in those lockers. No, I understand that, textbook but that we would have iPads. Right, but we, we will have those iPads. We just, we gotta roll them up. We gotta hold so. them to give us a date. I, I, I can't give you the exact date right now, but we, we are gonna roll those out. We're moving as quickly as we can on them. Sure. Yes, um, I just wanted to take a, a moment. I wanted to thank um, Mr. Ryan Herity, principal of the Cummings, and Mr. Brian Curley, um, vice principal, um, for providing counseling services for our children um, uh, this past week. And also to Anita Preble and Barbara Merrill, and if there was another adjustment counselor that I missed, they um, were there all day Wednesday and on Thursday for the wake and funeral of Sabrina, and they were there for any of our children that may have needed someone to talk to. And I just want to thank them and uh, Ryan and Brian for um, their help in such a tragic <coughs> time. And I do say thank you to all of them. Ms. Um, yes, I just wanted to take a minute to uh, really encourage and recommend the beginning of the school year is a great time to start getting involved and I know the, the kids are so excited they, they're finding out who's in their class and who their teacher is and you know they're getting their supplies ready and they're so excited and one of the best things we can do for our kids is to volunteer at school whether it's an hour a week or an hour a month or two hours for the whole year any time you can be in the classroom or be at an event, um, read to the students. There's lots of opportunities for volunteering. Uh, the PTO meetings will be happening the first couple weeks of school. So there's, um, that information will be coming out either on Facebook or on the school websites. I'm sure there's gonna be flyers in the backpacks. Um, but if, if there's anything we can do to help our kids be safe at school and to get the most out of it and to have it a, a rich community environment for them, you know, if there's any time that a parent or a grandparent or a neighbor has to just please try to volunteer and get to know the other students and the teachers and the administrators and so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. President Gill, do you have anything to say? No, all set, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gill, anything else? All set, thank you. Okay. Mr. Superintendent. I just have uh, one item here. Uh, Judy Van Poomen, who's in the audience tonight. And Judy I want to thank Judy for giving us an opportunity to go on her TV show uh, and talk about uh, the swing space that was out there. Uh, I was very appreciative of that. Um, but they're doing a, on Saturday, September 6th, at the Ingleside Park, it's Life Issues, Resource and Volunteer Fair. It's their third annual. Uh, there's live entertainment, family activities, uh, resources and information, learn about issues regarding the elderly, losing a loved one, as we so eloquently talked about tonight, children, low income and homelessness. Uh, great volunteer opportunities, uh, especially for our students who are looking for volunteer um, you know, hours. Um, talk to our North Shore and Boston vendors about opportunities to volunteer with their organizations. So it's a great opportunity for our kids to also uh, go there and maybe look at something that they've got a desire to work towards and, and um, you know, get some uh, hours in. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Um, the chair anticipates going into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, as the chair so declares, and I do so declare, and uh, I would ask for a motion to go into executive session at this time. Motion. Motion by President Gill. Second by Mrs. Sharkey. We'll take the vote. Um, Ms. Haynes, would you call the roll for executive session, please? Ms. Sullivan? Yes. Ms. Sharkey? Yes. Mr. Gill? Yes. Mr. Holden? Yes. Mr. Scarborough? Yes. Um, we will go into executive session now. The only other public um, issue that we will take up after the executive session is the adjournment of the public session. I do not anticipate that we will come back to this room. Uh, to do that, we'll do that, uh, and then it's Thank you very much.